money in the bank. We have qualifying matches. We have another Hell in a Cell match. Um, D-Dupe is now a thing, and we totally did a 360 with Nikki Cross, and now she's a superhero. And somehow Drew is able to be in qualifying matches for the Money in the Bank, but he can only challenge the SmackDown champion. Uh, welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling. We're reviewing everyone's favorite Monday night wrestling TV show, Monday Night Raw. We're starting. from the beginning. Bobby Lashley, MVP, and five ladies who change every week because apparently Bobby Lashley needs them, um, are celebrating because of the huge win last night at hell, well, two nights ago, at hell in a cell. Because now this means that Drew cannot go after Bobby anymore. They're celebrating. They're so excited when Kofi Kingston comes out and challenges Bobby Lashley for a title opportunity at Money in the Bank. And just wanted to celebrate on the toast, and it was funny because he actually he had actual toast, and he was throwing toast at MVP and everybody else. And somehow this then transformed into a really good promo by Xavier Woods, saying how he's always been underestimated. He wants to prove his point, and you know we've seen Big E do amazing things on SmackDown, and I was there when Kofi won the title, and now I want to prove myself. So he challenges Bobby Lashley to a match. But it's not just any match. It is a Hell in a Cell match. That is right. We are getting a Hell in a Cell match for the first time since August of 1998 on Monday Night Raw. So I guess the USA Network was not too happy that Smack that Fox got the Hell in a Cell match on SmackDown. There are some arguments. But yeah, so this was a match that was made. Um... I thought this was pretty interesting. I think because of the build-up of Kofi and MVP over the past couple weeks, it was very expected that this was the way that they were going to go. And I'm really looking forward to it. And it should be really good. I like the build. And we'll get into the main event, so we'll talk about the Hell in Cell match. The Hell in Cell match is really good. I think Wood really proved himself. And I think, you know, going based off his promo, when you look at all three members of the New Day, it feels like Woods hasn't really accomplished as much as Kofi and Big E. So to give him that spotlight in the main event just showed that he is on par with both of them and he held his own um obviously Bobby took the win here and then at the end MVP locked himself in and Kofi's trying to get in and Kofi's like half of his body can fit between the door and then he's just like banging like let me in let me in let me in so it's a really good way to end off um it makes me more invested with this feud and I'm really excited but speaking of money in the bank we gotta talk about some qualifying matches because the theme of, it was weird, because the theme of the night was upsets. So, the first qualifying match was AJ Styles versus Ricochet, which was a really good match. And Ricochet punched his ticket. He was the first qualifier of the night. Um, then, we had Riddle versus Drew McIntyre in a very, very good match as well. And Riddle punched his ticket to Money in the Bank. And then, the third match was Drew versus John Morrison, and with some distractions and a drip stick, John Morrison punches his ticket as well. So for the men's side, you have Riddle, you have John Morrison, and you have Ricochet. All three surprises. I think with the build-up, it does look to be a really good match. And I believe next week's the last qualifier. So AJ and Drew and Orton all have an opportunity to get last chance to get their spot. I think it's going to be Orton. So Riddle and Orton can both be in the money in the bank because when Riddle won his match, Orton was not happy because Orin's not in it and Orin's like oh man like I want to be in it too but I will say that the Riddle Drew McIntyre match was so good and a lot of people have on Twitter like Drew put his body on the line two nights ago in Hell in a Cell and he delivered a banger and that triple threat next week is probably going to be really good too so I like the qualifying matches I think they were really good but 
it was funny because the thing that Loki didn't make sense is they had this whole segment and it was like Cedric Alexander, Jeff Hardy, Jinder Mahal, and Sheamus and they were all complaining as to why they couldn't get qualifying matches. Meanwhile, the only person that makes sense to get a qualifying match out of all four of them is Jeff Hardy and or Sheamus. And they made nothing of this and the last qualifying match is a triple threat last chance. So that was really confusing to me. But, you know, that's just a boy. But on the women's side, the thing that was interesting is that instead of individual matches, we have tag team matches. So, I want to talk about, no, we'll save, we'll save Super Nikki for last. So we'll talk about Eva Marie. So the first match was Asuka and Naomi versus Eva Marie and Piper Niven, also now known as D-Dupe. So there was a backstage interview with Eva Marie and Piper Niven. And Eva Marie talked about, you know, like I was getting my nails done and then I caught a cold. So then I had to get my mentor in to do the match and she did really good. And as Piper was about to say that her name was Piper Niven, Eva Marie's like, no, 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 no. Her name is D Dupe. Okay. Um, and so this match is going on and Piper's mostly in the match the whole time. And then Pi and Piper goes to tag in Eva and there was another point in the match where like Eva was just standing on the outside like this, like not giving a care in the world and not wanting to go into the match. So basically Piper did the same thing and Eva got pinned. So best thing that happened. Eva's not going to the money in the bank, thank god. Um, I like that Naomi and Oscar are going, I'm still having hope that Liv Morgan's going to win the whole thing. But that match was fine, but then we go to the second women's qualifier match. And we somehow, I don't know how we did this, we transformed Nikki Cross into a superhero. So, it was Alexa and Nikki versus Shane and Nia, and you know, Shane and I were like, we're gonna be on the same page, like everything's gonna be fine. So, Nikki's calling this promo. It was a really weird promo. And she was talking about, like, spirit. It reminded me a lot of, like, an Ultimate Warrior promo. Like, the spirit and, like, for everyone that's getting knocked down, like, you have to believe in yourself and all this adversity, it makes you the person you are. And it was this really tight shot, so you only saw her face. And you saw that she had, like, this blue mask, blue and yellow mask on with, like, blue makeup. And they do, so then they widen out and you see that she's in this superhero costume. So she is now known as Super Nikki, so she's a superhero. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I agree with like how everyone said, oh, if I don't get this across, it's going to be Nikki. And I 100% agree with that. But thinking of like, she was the only girl in Sanity and she was crazy and even going to when Alice, when Alistair kept on getting attacked and they didn't know who and Nikki was the one who knew who, you go from that to this. What? So that, I don't know. I really have to see how this plays out. I also don't know why Nikki's not, like, I understand like Nikki's in the money in the bank so she really doesn't have to fight for an opportunity for the Wall of Moms title, but like, they could have just done a triple threat match. With, all, with Charlotte, Rhea, and Nikki. But whatever. Um, but the match was fine, but I just really want to know where the superhero character is coming from. And going into that, so Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce were like talking to Rhea about how she intentionally got herself disqualified. And Rhea's like, well, I did something, like Charlotte would have done the same thing. And Charlotte always breaks the rules, so I don't understand like why everyone's yelling at me. And Charlotte came out and was like, well, I'm gonna be the champion. Um, because I'm going to be Rhea Fair and Square the next time we face off. So now they're doing it to Money in the Bank. So I don't know how they're going to stretch this feud out for another 30 weeks. Um, especially with no stipulation. Like, you would figure they would do a no DQ stipulation. So that's really intriguing. So I, I got to see where this goes. I mean, the promos were fine. But it's just, again, we need matches with stipulations. Again, why was it Rhea and Charlotte in the Hell in a Cell match on Sunday? Like, I, I don't know, and I get very confused. So, I will say, if I'm going to rate Raw overall, I think that this Raw very much flowed quicker, and I don't know if it was just with the excitement of Money in the Bank, because that was really the theme all night, was just Money in the Bank, and qualifying matches, and upsets, so that was, like, something to really drive home. So, it, mo it flowed faster, 
but I have multiple questions of multiple things. So since Eva and Piper like somewhat split, is this like it? Or are they still a thing? Where is this superhero thing with Nikki Cross going? So I don't know. The wrestling was really good, I will say that. I've said the past couple weeks, the wrestling on Raw has been fire. It's just storyline wise that they are not quite there yet. And I'm hoping with the return of fans in three weeks that they'll get there. But this one wasn't that bad. The storyline we need to fix. Wrestling was good. And um, please fix your women's division. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. So I will say that tomorrow, well today, because I'm posting on Tuesday, I am getting my vaccine. Because I had to wait 90 days because I actually did have COVID. So... I'm assuming I'll be fine to do an NXT review, but just in case I'm not, I did get my vaccine. And then Friday, so I will not be able to do a SmackDown review or an AEW review this week because I'll be working and I can't watch it till Sunday and then I start camp on Monday. So because of that schedule, I, there will be no SmackDown or AEW review. This week it'll just be Raw, NXT, and Impact. So yeah, so that's it for me. And I'll see you all tomorrow.